let's talk about joints inside of Fusion 360. Now, if you come from a more traditional modeling background, such as Inventor or SolidWorks, chances are you're more familiar with something called constraints or mates. And as you know, with constraints or mates, it typically takes three constraints or mates in order to fully place and define a part inside of an assembly. With Fusion, we use something called joints, and oftentimes we can remove all the degrees of freedom with a single joint. Now here you can see some different types of joints that we can create. So we have rigid, revolute, slider, cylindrical, pin slot, planar, and ball. And you can see that for the different joint types, we restrict or allow certain degrees of freedom. So if we look at the rigid, the rigid doesn't allow any motion at all. Rigid is like it's being bolted or welded together. Revolute allows one rotation. Rotation would be around X, Y, or Z. Slider allows one translation. Translation would be in X, Y, or Z. Cylindrical allows one translation and one rotation. A pin slot allows one translation and one rotation. Planar is two translation and one rotation. And the ball allows for three rotation degrees of freedom. So depending on your different needs, you can use these different joint types to be able to position the parts accurately. Let's switch over to Fusion and look at an example of doing this. Here we are inside of a Fusion design, and you can see in this design I have several components that are placed. One important thing about joints is that joints will only work on components that will not work with bodies. The other important thing about joints is that you want at least one of your components in your assembly to be grounded. That is, it won't be able to move around. You can see if I grab this piece right here, I can drag it anywhere I want to. I'm going to undo that, and to make it so it won't drag around anymore, I'm going to right click on that piece and I'm gonna to choose to ground it. Now if I try to move it, it won't move anymore. So we're going to assemble all the rest of the parts to that base piece that we did. From the assemble menu, I'm gonna choose joint, and the first thing you'll notice is that the base has turned translucent, indicating that I can select it. Whatever we select first is going to move to our second selection, and what I wanna do is I want to bring this yellow piece down to the red piece and assemble those things together. You can see as I hover my mouse over different faces, I get different points of interest that I can select on. Midpoints of lines, endpoints of lines, centroids of masses, uh, centers of holes, the center points of arcs, different things that we can select on. And in this case, what I want to grab is the centroid of mass at the bottom of this yellow point. So I just want to highlight my mouse over that until that white square appears, and I'm going to click. Now that part's going to turn translucent, and everything else appears fully visible. Now I want to select the corresponding point on the red base object. So if I hover my mouse over here, you can see all those points appear. But one thing that happens is I move my mouse to that center point and it disappears. So the trick to this to get the, to lock into the points on this face is on Windows you will hold the control down and on Mac you will hold the command button down. So I'm going to hold command and now you can see I can move my mouse over to that point and select it. And when I do, those two pieces assemble together and you can see by the motion uh, that we added a rigid joint. Now you can cycle through the different types and see what will, what will happen. That would be a revolute. We could change the axis of rotation if we wanted to see what that would do. So you can see we can go through and change some different things about them. Here's a slider. We'll slide back and forth. A cylindrical, just, a cylindrical will rotate and slide at the same time. We can have a pin slot so you can see what that would animate like, a planer, and then the final one is a ball. Now the one that makes the most sense for us here is going to be the rigid. I just wanted to go through the animation so you can see the different types that Fusion tries to guess as you, as you assemble these together. So I now have these two pieces uh, the way that I want them, and I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. If I grab on this yellow piece now, you see that I can no longer move it. It's bonded to the red piece. And if we look over in our browser, we're going to see another folder over here called Joints. And here you can see our Joints folder appears. You can also see the symbol for a rigid joint appear. If we don't want to see that symbol anymore, we can turn off the light bulb. Or we can turn off the top level light bulb for the Joints folder completely. I don't recommend turning off the top level light bulb because we'll, you'll probably want to find more joints along the way as you're going through. What I want to do now is I want to assemble these two bushings to this clevis part. So from the assemble menu, or we can use J on the keyboard, I'm going to start a joint, 
and I'm going to click on that edge right there. I'm going to click on that back edge right there. And now those are going to be assembled. This is a good example of you can choose which one you want to use. A rigid joint will work just fine. A revolute joint would work fine. In all actuality, we're probably not going to be spinning that bushing. So in this case, a rigid is what I'm going to stick with because I just want to place that at the center, but I don't necessarily want to see that uh, bearing be able to spin around. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. This time I'm going to push J on my keyboard to start the joint command. And I'm going to click on this circle and that edge of that circle right there. Now that time, the bushing went the wrong direction. The, the two edges are aligned, but I'm getting the opposite result that I want. In the dialog box, there's a button here called Flip. I'm going to flip it, and now that assembles that. It flips its orientation, and it's now oriented the right way. And I can go ahead and choose OK. So the distance between this face and this face, if we look in the lower right-hand corner, is 1.8125. Whereas, if I click on that face and that face, we have 1.75. So the distance between the clevis faces is wider than the distance between my mating faces, bolting faces there. So I'm going to use something you can do inside of the joint command, and that's find the midpoint between two faces. So again, from the assemble menu, I'm going to choose joint. And before I do anything, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose between two faces. I want to select on the first face, then click on the second face. And now it wants to know where my cylindrical reference is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that edge right there. So you can see that joint origin is now located there. And I want to do the same thing down here between these two faces. So again, I'm going to right click and choose between two faces and say this face and the other face. And now I'm going to select that same cylindrical reference. And now you can see that that clevis was brought down and a rigid joint was added. I have a couple of choices I could use for a motion type here. I could do a revolute, which would allow that to spin around. And probably in all actuality, we would also uh, potentially use a cylindrical, which would allow it to rotate around the axis but slide back and forth because these two ears are going to capture the part and not let it slide side to side. So if that was an important motion, you can do that. In our case, we're going to choose the revolute joint so that this clevis pin can rotate around. The other thing to notice is that only the clevis pin is previewing the two bushings are still sitting up here and they're not, they haven't been moved into place. That's okay to save some horsepower on the computer when it calculates this. It only calculates the objects that you click on. When we choose okay, those bushings will snap into place where they were in the previous joint that we created. We have just a couple more parts to assemble here. Again, from the assemble menu, I'm gonna select joint and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this edge and I'm also going to come and click on this edge right there. This time I chose to do Revolute, which would be an OK option. I could also use Rigid to go ahead and click OK. And now we have the final piece to assemble, and that's going to be our nut. So from the Assemble menu, I'm going to choose Joint again. I'm going to hover over the edge where I want it to assemble to. And I'm going to go and select the corresponding edge of this washer. Now you can see it, it tries to bounce between grabbing the threads and the washer. So again, if I hover over this face and hold the command button down, I've now locked my selection to that and I can come and click on the edge. And now my, my nut moves to where that bushing was located. I can go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see that our assembly is all jointed up. One of the things that you'll also notice is that you can flex your assembly and kind of see what's happening. And when I do that, as soon as I make a move, these two new buttons up here, uh, up here called Capture Position or Revert. If I click on Revert, it places the assembly back into the location it was before I started to flex it. If I move it and I tell it to Capture, you can see in our timeline down here now we have a Capture Position. This can be used for some advanced assembly methods. Oftentimes, you don't want to have a bunch of capture positions in your timeline. Over time, it'll slow your model down. So if you didn't need to move your model to a particular position for a future modeling operation, I would encourage you to use revert instead of capture. I'm just going to right click on this and say that I would like to delete this. As we create different joints, you can see the joint types have been added. And the last uh, joint we, we created was a revolute joint. Again, I'm going to revert this.
I'm going to right click on this Revolute and I'm going to say that I want to do something called an edit a joint limit. I want to set a minimum and a maximum joint. And so what I'm going to say is I want the minimum to be minus 45 and I want the maximum to be positive 45. And now I can go ahead and click OK. And now you can see I can drag it, but it stops when it gets to those two joint limits that I added. It won't rotate past that. There's another way we could do this called a contact set. And when we use contact sets, that takes some horsepower to calculate that. And so oftentimes it's easier to use a joint limit and just set the range of motion you want this component to have rather than it using a contact set to determine when two solid bodies are going to interfere. So this is adding joints between components now let's take a look at something called an as-build joint. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna download a file from the McMaster car catalog and then add a joint between the downloaded imported geometry. So from the insert menu, I'm gonna to choose to insert a McMaster car component and I wanna go and do a search for it. I'm gonna search for spherical, spherical ball joints and I'm gonna choose this ball joint rod end. Now I'm gonna scroll through the list and find one that I like. I'm gonna choose this 1-12, click on that, go to the product detail page, scroll down, and I'm gonna find the right-hand version of this and click on it. Now it wants to know uh, what file format I want to download this in. I've downloaded it in a step, and so it's come up with my default choice. I typically use step. You can try other formats to see what works for you, but step is my preferred. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and this ball joint rod end will open up inside of Fusion. It gives me the opportunity to move it if I want to, and I don't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose okay to accept its default location. Now you can see here's my component here. If I expand this out and look, I have two bodies, and I can't create a joint between bodies. So what I wanna do is right click on body one, and say I'd like to create a component from body. I'm gonna slow double click on that, I'm going to call this housing. Then I'm going to go to the second one. I'm going to right click and then choose create components from bodies. Then I'm going to slow double click on it and call this ball. So now I have two components that I've created. As I mentioned before, we always want to have at least one of our components in assembly file grounded. So I'm going to right click on housing and select ground. Now that component can no longer move. If I try to click on it and drag, it won't go anywhere. So from the assemble menu, I want to do an as-build joint. And then I'm going to select the two components that are going to participate in that as-build joint. So it's going to be the housing and the ball. And it wants to know where the position is. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to turn off the housing for a second and just click on the outside part of this ball. It's going to figure out the center of it. It chose to do a slider. And what I wanted to do instead is do a ball joint. So there I'm getting the right motion and I can always turn on my housing back on and animate the joint to see that it's what I want it to actually do. And we'll go ahead and choose OK. Now when I click on this you can see that the ball moves around inside of there and that's exactly the motion that we're going with. I'm going to go ahead and revert that. So there you can see that uh, we can import things and quickly create an as-built joint. Let's take a look at our third example of adding joints. Here is a Kurt Weiss that I downloaded from their website. It came in as a step file. When this file was created in the native CAD system, it was all constrained and everything was placed in the right location. However, you can see now if I grab on the, on the components, they're all free to move. None of them are fixed in space, I should say. They don't have any relationships to find. So what we'd like to do is use something called a combination of as-built joints and rigid groups to do this. So as always, the first thing we should do is right click on the vice body, our, our first component, and ground it. Now if I try to move that, that body, it's grounded, it won't move anywhere. If we think about this fixed jaw and this mount right here, these are, these are never going to move either. And we could do a joint to those, or else we could just say, you're connected to this thing that can't move, and we could call something called a rigid group. So I'm gonna hold the control button down, or the command button down in the Mac, and I'm gonna select the vice body, the fixed jaw and the fixed jaw mount. And I'm gonna right click and choose rigid group. So those are my three components and I'm gonna go ahead and choose okay. Now when I try to grab those, they'll no longer move anymore. They were modeled in place, so we don't really need to worry about going and creating the joints between them. The same situation is gonna happen between these two components right here. 
So again, I'm gonna hold down the control or the command while I select the moving jaw mount and the moving jaw. I'm gonna right click and choose to create a rigid group and click OK. Now I do want this jaw to be able to slide back and forth. So to do that, I'm gonna do an as built joint. So from the assemble menu, I'm gonna choose as built joint and it wants to know what the components are gonna be. So I wanna choose that component and that component where I want to add that and what kind of a joint do I want this to be. In this case, I want it to be a slider. And it's sliding in the wrong direction, so I'm going to change it to go along the x-axis, back and forth, and that looks like the motion that I want. Remember, it only previews the active part that you're clicking on. I'm going to choose OK. Now I can grab this mount and drag this back and forth. So now I have a functional vise that required minimal effort from me to actually assemble it and add some intelligence to it. I'm going to revert this back and I hope that this video gives you an insight on getting started with joints inside of Fusion 360. For more things Fusion 360 and in fact all things CNC and manufacturing entrepreneurship related head over to nyccnc.com. We've got content on all that, including Fusion 360 video tutorials on everything from patch to lathe to cam to joints to post processors and more. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday.